about one really easy way to make your mesh nice and divide it the exact same. I'm going to go ahead and control Z back to where we started here. So if we want nice, even geometry all over our mesh, what we can do is we can go to Tool, Geometry Submenu. Let's go ahead and close down Dynamic for now. We'll open up the Dynamesh menu, and you're going to see we have a Dynamesh button. Important things about Dynamesh, and we're just going to talk about the basics for now. We'll get more in depth later. But right now what I'm worried about is this resolution slider. So if you hit the Dynamesh button, that's going to Dynamesh your object. And you're also going to see we've toggled that button on, so Dynamesh is now active for this object. And you're going to see we have little tiny squares all over our object, and they're all perfectly even all over the surface. If you undo that and you change this resolution up, like say to 400 and hit Dynamesh, you're going to see those squares are a lot smaller. Now, of course, when we were subdividing our mesh and we're going from one big square to four small squares to four small squares as we were subdividing, you know that smaller squares equals resolution. So if we Dynameshed at 400 and turn off Polyframe, and then you use your standard brush, you're going to see we have very, very detailed strokes here. If we undo back to where we started, and then we Dynamesh at like, just drag the slider down to say 32 and Dynamesh, you can see the squares are a lot bigger, you turn off Polyframe, and now you're able to sculpt, but it's not quite as high res. Now there's caveats all over the place to this, and we'll talk about them as we get to more specific things that we're going to want to model. But for the most part, if you're just blocking in an object, especially an organic one like a creature or a witch, you're going to want to start at as low a resolution as possible, just like when you're sketching. If you're just sketching, you don't want to start out with the freckles on the upper lip or the poor detail or the lines in the lips or anything. You just want to get the basic forms. So you're going to want to start as low as possible just to dial these basic forms in. So we can kind of add a cheek here and then maybe a brow. We'll pull in the eyes a little bit here. So we're just getting the basic forms of our object down. Now, if we need more resolution, we can take this resolution slider and we can crank it up. And then instead of tapping, I mean, you can turn Dynamesh on and off again, but what you want to do is control drag in your object and that'll re-Dynamesh at the higher resolution. So now you're going to see when I'm sculpting, I'm able to add even more detail in here. So we can go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and pull this down through here. Use the Damien standard brush there, which we talked about in earlier videos. Then we get our standard brush and then hold down Alt to push in. We're going to use our smooth brush here and we're able to dial in more detail as we go. So that's one way to add resolution to your mesh. Now Dynamesh is going to Dynamesh the entire object. So you're going to see the entire object uh, has been equally added geometry here. And the coolest thing about it is you can continue Dynameshing as you go. If you make major changes, let's go back to our snake hook brush. So B, S, H for our snake hook. If you remember when we were pulling out the snake hook, see how the geometry just kind of goes it gets pulled so thin as I'm pulling this out. See how stretched that geometry is getting? If we go back to our standard brush here, and then we try to sculpt on this, you're going to see it's sculpting fine here, and then as we get here, it gets really nasty. So since we've pulled those so thin, just control drag in your canvas, and that'll re -dynamesh. And if you accidentally, if you undo that, you control dragged, and you accidentally got a little piece of your object, all you got to do is control drag to unmask, and then control drag again. That'll re mesh. And now as we sculpt down the object, it's all nice and perfectly even. So you're going to constantly be able to update a nice even surface as you sculpt. And you can make entire bodies out of this. So if we go back to our snake hook brush, BSH, and we like pull down a neck here, and then control drag to Dynamesh, and then we can pull out some shoulders here, re mesh. And we're just control dragging to read Dynamesh's object. And every time I do that, they're just adding more and more geometry here. In fact, if we want to go ahead and put a hat on her, we can just pull this out to a point here. And of course, this is there's a lot easier ways to create a hat. In fact, you know what? We'll get to that later. But we can go ahead and just control drag. And then let's go back to our move brush. So BMV. And we'll go ahead and give her a little bit more of a neck here. We can kind of pull this neck down a little bit like so. And we haven't talked about the gizmo yet, so I'm not going to rotate her around, which I really want to do right now. But you can see how quickly you can start pulling out major forms and just keep dynameshing. And again, you want to work as low as you can. So if I drop this down to resolution 80, this will be a little bit more manageable. And you're going to want to get your overall sketch in before you start adding resolution later. Now there are some, I don't know if I'd call them drawbacks, but just things to keep in mind when you're using dynamesh. And we're going to get into techniques to dynamesh with a little bit more control. But one thing you can do with dynamesh, if you take the move brush and you pull this up, so that the chin is 
touching the nose, or in fact, you know what? Let's say the chin is almost touching the nose. This is a very stylized character. Um, so now if we control drag this, they're going to stay uh, undynamesh. But if you're working at a very low resolution, let's say 32 or 8, you're going to see, let's make it a little bit higher than that. Let's say 32. Uh, maybe not. Let's drop all the way down to 8. So if you control drag this one, you're going to see, uh, depending on the resolution, those objects are going to want to stick together. I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. I'm going to hit BI for brush insert. I'm going to go to insert mesh body parts here. Hit M, grab a hand, pull that out on the head here, and then we're going to control drag, control drag again, and you're going to see those hands completely closed up. Now as you add more resolution in DynaMesh, they'll stay apart, but if you wanted to work on objects that have really close appendages here, DynaMesh might be an okay option for that, but if you wanted to work at different resolutions, what you're going to have to do is split these up into separate objects, which we haven't gotten to yet. Now, if you didn't want to split these up into separate objects and you did want to DynaMesh these together, which we can do, so we can go ahead and DynaMesh those objects together here, another option for you would be Sculptures Pro. One more option I want to bring up, I don't use this a lot, but I just want to make sure you know it's available. I'm going to go in here, I'm going to grab a cube 3D, we're going to make it a polymesh 3D, and I'm going to go down here to geometry, open up DynaMesh, I'm going to turn off blur, and I'm going to drop my resolution down to 32, so very low res DynaMesh. So we'll turn DynaMesh on, and this is the result we get, very even quads all the way around my object here. Now generally speaking when I'm DynaMeshing, I don't have project turned on, uh, project will turn, will cause some problems when you're using like group splitting and using the groups functionality. And generally speaking, since I just use DynaMesh for a block out process and when I want to detail, I'll zero mesh project and then start sculpting, I won't really need to project as I'm DynaMeshing. I generally won't have it on, but there's one instance where it might come in handy for you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hover over sub projection here and hold down control and you're going to see, uh, this will give you a little bit more info, but what it's essentially going to do is pack more information around the edges and then leave the broad open areas with less geometry. So for example, if I go over here, I'll do shift S just to store that as a screenshot here. I'm going to turn project on and with sub projection at six, I'm going to re and you're going to see it's going to pack more information in those corners. I'm going to hit control N to clear my canvas. Where this might come in handy is if I hold down control shift and we're going to do a trim curve operation so we can hold down control shift, we can trim these edges off. That's going to slice through, close holes, give me a very nice clean cut here. In fact, if we turn off polyframe, you see how clean that is. And now when I re mesh with project turned on and sub projection set at six, you're going to see how clean it packs geometry along here. Now it's not very well distributed geometry because it is packing more geometry on high value edge changes but you will get very clean edge results. So if you are doing just a lot of, and again, just control drag to re -dynamesh, doing a lot of hard surface uh, slicing in here and you want to maintain those really hard edges without paying the cost of a very high resolution DynaMesh, this can be an option for you.